Well, hello everyone. It's uh, February the 17th and uh, I figured I'd come out and do another mod on the uh, BX25D. It's Monday morning and I'm going to tell you it's a bad day out there. We've had snow, we've had freezing rain, then rain, then back to freezing rain, then snow, and uh, 136 km hour winds. It's uh, it's so bad that some newly constructed uh, or buildings under construction is even blown down. Tractor trailers have blown across the road. So it's a, it's a nasty day and there's people in the local area that don't even have power. So lucky enough we didn't lose our power this time. So hopefully we won't. Anyway, a mod that I'm going to be doing today is, uh, like I say, on the BX. It's going to be a little bit different than what you're used to seeing because this is not a mod that I've designed or fabricated myself. It's actually a bot accessory for the BX. And uh, just waiting for the delivery truck now to deliver it. It's supposed to be here within the next uh, half an hour or so. Should be interesting and uh, it's kind of new for the BX. So I'm going to try to give you some close up views of the installation and maybe that will help somebody along the way. So let's uh, hang on and see when the truck's going to show up. Okay, the courier is here with the new item for the BX. I'll keep the camera in here and that way uh, you don't get all the wind noise. Okay, here it is. Obviously, you know what it is by now. It's the uh, grapple by Land Pride for the uh, built especially for the BX, and uh, looks like a nice little system. Uh, in the bag here is the uh, third function valve kit. So I'll get that out down shortly, and uh, I'll show you what what it looks like as a kit. And of course, with the uh, the third function valve kit, that'll allow me to uh, to do other things with the BX and make other custom implements for it as well that I can run the hydraulics off of. But it uh, looks like a nice little system. I think they said it weighs only 25 pounds or something heavier than the uh, OEM bucket, but I have the OEM bucket modified anyway, so I guess it's going to weigh about the same because I got this spill guard put on my bucket so it's a uh, it'll probably work out the same but I like the way they got it built of course everybody knows that uh, Land Pride is a uh, is a well-known reputable company so you know you're pretty well confident when you get something built by Land Pride it's uh, it's properly designed and fabricated and engineered whatever so and uh, by the way I'm not getting uh, I'm not getting paid for this. This is uh, this is bought of my own money, and uh, there's there's nothing in it for me. So I have nothing to gain by telling you it's a good system. But uh, it'll certainly be more beneficial to the BX having it on the, the front of the machine. It's another blade in the Swiss Army knife, I call it. So anyway, I'll get the uh, bag open there now, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here it is off the pallet. Nice to see it made in the USA. Uh, 
Looks like it's well built. Uh, one thing I do like about it is I like the fold up stand that's on it there. I got a block put under it so I can show you how it works. And uh, right here, flick the button and you put it down like that. And that keeps the, uh, the grapple upright. One thing I don't like is there's uh, no allowances to grease it. So I'm going to uh, change that later on. And then over here, I'll show you the parts. And uh, here's your third function control. It is quite large, but I guess you'll get used to that. This is a keeper for the uh, hose that's going out to the uh, grapple. Uh, this is your solenoid. Uh, your little fuse here, inline fuse. There's a little bit of damage right there, as you can see. And where else did I see it? Oh, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a chip in it right there, but I'm not going to uh, worry too much about it. So this here is the main hose. This, this one here will go on your, your FEL tube. These here will go back to your solenoid, like that. And the long ones here will go to your uh, power beyond under the tractor. But I do see a problem. And the problem is right here. This is the hose. These here are supposed to have quick connects on there so that you can hook up your, uh, your grapple and they're not included or they're not in with the kit and as you can see in figure 22 they should be there but they're not there so that's a problem so basically two quick connects are going to uh, not allow me to finish the project so I'm gonna have to call the dealer and find out what's up okay seeing we've got a couple of the mail uh, quick connects left out of the package. I'm going to see if I can find them locally, but I'm going to continue on with the install. So I'm going to take off the OEM bucket there now, and then I'm going to come back into the shop, and I'm going to uh, start at it. So I'll put the door on. Sick of winter. Okay, I got her all jacked up. Jack stands underneath. As you can see, I left the uh, backhoe attachment on. No need to take it off. This uh, right rear wheel is going to have to come off. And I'm also going to have to take off the uh, lower skid pan that I have uh, fabricated for it. So that's my next well, step. We were talking to our uh, our dealer, Kubota dealership, uh, Newfoundland Kubota in St. John's, Newfoundland, and uh, I was telling them about the uh, quick connects, two quick connects being missing from this bracket. So the quick connects are exactly like this. According to the schematic, the parts break down. There's uh, two here, and there's two here. The two were on the diverter valve, but they were not on the, uh, 
the business end, we'll call it, on bracket number one. So they never had any in stock, so they pulled three kits. They had three kits in stock, and guess what? Those quick connects, the male quick connects, were uh, actually missing out of all the three kits. So anybody who's ordering this particular uh, third function valve kit, better check before you take it from the dealer and make sure that they are in fact on the end of this bracket. Most likely they won't be. Maybe a land pride will pick up on it and and put them into uh, and, put, and start putting them on the you know on the machine because everything else was already hooked up. The hoses and everything was already hooked up and you know it's done nice. It's just that I guess it's an oversight on somebody's part. There's no way to actually hook your bucket up or your grapple up to the uh, to the bracket because they don't have the quick connect. Also, another thing I've noticed, like there's a little bit of damage on the bracket here on the on the solenoid. Let me just show you. And uh, right there, you can see it there as well. And I think Land Pride or whoever puts out this valve, I would say it's Land Pride. This kit because it's written right on the instructions. They shouldn't be putting it in a bag. I mean. Bags get thrown around and it has absolutely no protection qualities whatsoever. So my advice to Land Pride would be to box it and put some bubble wrap at least around the valve. You know, these things are going to be traveling many miles before they actually see the tractor that it's intended for. So I would advise them to make a few changes in their in their quality of the packaging. Now, I'll take you over and explain some stuff here to you. So if you do go at it yourself, at least you'll understand. This valve is supposed, excuse me for a second, this valve is supposed to go on power beyond. Now the power beyond for this one, wow I wish I could, this is magnetic, hang on now see if I can get this to stick. Cool. Thank God for snap-on lights. Okay that's the uh, the hydraulic block right here. Where you see the black marker, that's the power beyond. Now that's going to be a short pipe. It's a tight fit. It goes down along here. And uh, probably about six inches beyond that, you're going to see a nut. The long hose will hook onto here. And once you take this pipe, the long hose will hook onto here. And the shorter part of the hose for the diverter valve will also hook onto the other end. So that's where you're going to get your hydraulic pressure. This particular wire here that you see, that's my doing. That's for the uh, backup alarm, so i got to change this now. I'm just going to reroute that. And I'll just show you what it's going to be like underneath okay, now. Okay, let's see if I can set all this up properly. Okay, you can see, hang on a second now. Let's see if I can get situated here. Okay, you can see the, the marker on that pipe. Well that's the other end of that pipe. So that's got to, uh, that short pipe has got to come off. And bear with me for a minute folks. It's a tight fit. Okay. So there you have it. That short pipe got to come out of it. There's our famous HST fan that always breaks. Now that hole's got to come past that fan blade, so whenever you're doing these things, you want to make sure that they're, uh, they're well secured. You don't want that hose hitting that fan. And you don't want to tie it on to, to this, this shaft right here, because that's the dry shaft. So we're going to have to figure out some way of, uh, of getting that, that hose past there and have it secured and safe. And folks, I'm going to tell you, if you got a BX and you're at the, you're at this job putting in the third function valve, it might be a good time to change your filters because uh, they got a tendency to uh, get pretty grubby pretty quick. Okay, so I'm going to take off that pipe now, and then I'm going to uh, start hooking you things can see up. The, you can see the diverter valve right there. So as you can see, there's uh, one hose longer than the other. Well, the longer hose is going to go to the block side of the tractor. I just wanted to let you know, too, when you let that pipe go, like this is let go here now, 
there's going to be no pressure on the pipe and you're only going to basically lose the oil that's in the pipe now so it's really no big deal but I just wanted to let you know because sometimes people get worried about pressures and and whatnot so there's the pipe so that's that's uh, going to be eliminated now it won't be going back there so now I'm going to uh, start hooking the hoses up from the diverter valve and we shall see how that goes but I just I just did want to reassure you that that pipe is not under pressure and of course everything is on his jack stands too and there's no pressure on the hydraulics whatsoever so that could be part of it as well but it's always a worry but I will advise you that if you do go up under the vehicle or under the tractor put on some uh, eye protection because there's always sand and crud and stuff under these things and uh, you don't want that stuff getting in your eyes. Now, I also stuff. should have mentioned too that uh, that particular pipe the nuts on the end of it are 17 millimeter it'd be a good idea to have uh, a stubby 17 millimeter as well now what I'm going to do is the diverter valve right there the bracket on it comes with a uh, long carriage bolt so you take out the carriage bolt that's here you'll get it from underneath it's a 12 millimeter nut on it and uh, you basically eliminate the one that came out and you mount the diverter valve there what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to stuff the hoses in on the back down through here before I mount it should make it a little easier so the Mayo Quick Connect showed up today. The dealer was kind enough to send them out to me. And as you can see, they're there. I uh, pretty well got everything sewed up. I put these uh, dust uh, caps on as well. I had to put some tape on it because it used to keep sliding down the, the hose. So they're nice to have when you let go of the implement. You can uh, keep the dust from getting into the Quick Connects. And the same thing up here as well. I. Uh, I put the dust caps, I think they're a couple of bucks each. So it's a pretty good deal. Now let's go down from the below and I'll show you okay, what I Okay, so this is what I came up with to take the, uh, the sharp turn off the hose going up to the, uh, the solenoid valve. It's, uh, it's, it's all I could get and it, and it works really well, so it's fine. And, and what I did, I came back here hope you can see this because I'm getting some shadows. I put some uh, protective on this, some protective casing on this, just in case it was rubbing up against these shafts here. And uh, I got rid of a lot of the uh, tie wraps. And as you can see, what I did here is I made a bracket up along here. And the bracket basically, I'll get my light. The bracket basically got the uh, got the hoses held away from the uh, from the main drive shaft. Uh, Kubota couldn't have been too worried about distance from the drive shaft because this is their fuel line right there. That's uh, pretty close to touching, but it hasn't touched. So I guess uh, mine should be okay too. Like I say, there's a good distance away. Now I might add too that this is really not the way the instructions tell you to install these lines. I'm going to move back so I can give you a better shot of the underneath. Uh, the reason why I put the lines like this is because ours got a skid pan, this machine got a skid pan, and I want the lines inside the skid pan. I didn't want them exposed. Um, I've got a reason for not putting them out here on, on the underside of the floor pan because I'm going to do another mod pretty soon and I'm going to need this area here for the mod. So I didn't want to put those lines out there. But I will show you how they, uh, how they intended to put these, uh, these lines on. First of all, this line here was the one that we, we let go from the uh, power beyond. This line, which would be the long one, would come out and go out through the HST fan. And uh, let me see, we've got to get out. 
I'll show you. And it would come out through here. Let me see. Of course, the light won't stay where you want it to stay. Mm -hmm. Should have used my snap on light. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So, the line would have come out through here, would have come down through here by the wheel well. You could probably put it in under and go along underneath the floor pan and come up here. And of course the power beyond, which would be the shorter line, which, be, which would be line 17, would, would leave here and would uh, follow the same route. And it's, it's a very simple process to do it that way and come up here. I chose to go inside the frame rails because I wanted to have the hoses uh, up inside the skid pan. That's the only reason why I did it that way. So uh, just keep that in mind. Like if you, if you don't have a skid pan, you can uh, come out and just come up under the floorboard here and it'll be a lot easier for you. It's uh, three times faster. Okay, as way. you can see, we have the, uh, I have the keeper bracket on there now. I had to remove my bucket leveler that I had made, so I'll have to design another one now, but that's not too serious. And uh, you can see the main bracket on the, uh, the tube, FEL tube, and of course you can see the missing male uh, quick connects. And then I ran the, uh, the hoses up here, up through the tube here, and then in there as you can see. Uh, it's quite strong. Now what I did is uh, I mounted the switching and I cut two inches off the original arm because it was just up too high. It was up two inches higher and that's too high. Now on the video for Land Pride they had this mounted with the buttons out here. Now maybe they just did it just to show you what the buttons look like, but it didn't make a lot of sense, so I put the buttons inside. And I ran the, the tube, or ran the wiring down through the side of the uh, FEL control. Ran it down through the boot and out through the bottom. And I really like that casing that they, they use on this. And as a matter of fact, I have some of that casing that I'll show you. And. Uh, there it is there, it's expandable, expandable braided sleeving. And uh, I use it quite a lot. And that can expand probably three times the size of that. And uh, it works quite well. What I had to do, I'm going to try to run the wiring down the same route that I put the hoses through. And the hoses basically go down through the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the wiring through that way and I'm going to come up in this area here. I'll show you that shortly. But with this braided stuff I had to add on to the, uh, the wiring for the switch here. So what I did is I used some of that my own braided mesh sleeving there. And how you cap it off, you cut it and then you heat it up like you would with a nylon rope. and then. You slide, slide it on over your wire, and then you use some heat shrink on it, and it really makes it look good. So uh, I'll continue on now, and then I'll show you what I got done. For the wiring, I let go of the knobs here on the uh, hood, or on the side skirts, and you'll see a little thing down here. Maybe some people aren't even aware it's there. It's this. Kind of reminds me of a, a dipstick type of thing. And how that works. See if I can. That holds the hood up to uh, up a little bit for you, so it don't fly all the way up. And what I did is there's a clip that goes inside on the uh, frame, and I take this clip out and I run the wire through. So you can see it there. So that's going to be a wire for the, uh, the control for the third function. So I'm going to put this piece back in it, 
slide it back in as such. I'll show you when I get it on because I can't use the camera and push this on at the same time. Okay, I just about got the uh, the third function switch set up and wired in. Now this is going to look a bit different than most guys BX because I got auxiliary uh, fuse panels put in it as you can see right there and they're all hooked up to uh, relays which are there in the back and the reason why the relays are there is so that I can turn on um, when I turn off my ignition, I can turn off all my lights at the same time. Otherwise, if I hooked it up to the battery positive, uh, the lights could be on. Somebody turned the lights on, even with the ignition turned off. Now, um, this uh, third function switch or valve, uh, they say to run it to the positive wire, but in this case, I'm going to be running it right here, which will only have power when the ignition is on. So that's all I need. So this is basically the... Uh, the wiring harness coming from the third function switch and uh, it's got two black and it's got two red so the instructions state to join the two red to the provided uh, 10 amp fuse holder and that will go right here and the other two wires, the two black ones, just goes to the uh, actuator itself and uh, they didn't state whether it be black or white so it shouldn't make any difference and I guess it's self grounding so I just wanted to show you that before I sewed it up and uh, then I'm able to see then if, uh, if I can hear the solenoids cutting in and out. I can't really test it because I don't have, uh, I don't have the quick connects for the front yet. But uh, we're getting there. The other thing I wanted to point out too, if you looked at the wiring here, um, everything is heat shrinked, everything is soldered and heat shrinked. There's, uh, there's really no quick connects as such. Um, You'll see them crimps, crimps on the end, that, that's acceptable. But when I'm joining a wire, I'll always solder and I'll always uh, heat shrink. And uh, people use these things. I mortally hate these things. These, I call them stab locks. And they create nothing but trouble. So, you know, I discourage anybody from, from using them because when you get out, you know, with your tractor, you don't want trouble with your wiring. And, and these create problems. If you, uh, if you look over here, I have a good Weller gun that I use, some good solder, and I also use a good heat gun. Now people use lighters and stuff on their uh, heat shrink. It's not the proper way to do it. Use a heat gun. They're not that expensive and uh, it does a far better job. Okay, well, there's the wiring. It's sewed up. It's all tucked away. It looks like a bit of a state there because I'm running a lot of lights and stuff on this thing and of course the auxiliary fuse panel takes up a lot of wiring and there's relays up along here everywhere but uh, it's no more congested than it always was so let's take a look over here so there's the third function, third function valve or third function valve uh, control wiring comes down it goes inside the boot it comes down along here, down along the valve, and of course there it mates with the with the wiring for the uh, actuator, and it leaves there and it goes down under the uh, side skirt, comes in through as I showed you. Then it leaves and it goes up inside and across the top of the battery and out to the auxiliary. And uh, I'll show you now. I know it works because I just tried it, but I'll just show you. It's pretty cool actually. There's little LED lights on here, so I'll just show you. So obviously that's closed, that's open. So we know it works. So I guess the only thing left to satisfy me would be to see if I can get that 90 degree angle uh, machine to put on the uh, connector to put on the end of that hose underneath because I don't like the uh, sweep in the hose. So that's what I'm going to do and uh, then I can, uh, by that time, it'll be tomorrow now, so by that time I'll have the quick connects for the front and uh, 
should be able to try it, see if everything so works. So now that it's all hooked up, just going to give it a little trial run just to see. Oh, the other thing that I did too is, before we started up, I put a male on this end and a female on this end. Same thing up where it joins into the uh, actuator because, or the third function valve, because when I disconnect this, if I had the two females on the same end, you could have it, you could be putting it on reverse. So instead of going up, it'd be closing. So this way it's pretty well foolproof. It's uh, one, is, one is mismatched with the other, so it's got to work great. So let's have a look here. It's actually pretty fast. It's a lot faster than I uh, anticipated. And for anybody that's putting this on their machines, if you start them up and you put pressure on them, like that, and you just shut them off, if you went to disconnect those hoses, those hoses are still under pressure. So what I usually do, and most people will know this, is just turn your key to the on position and just hit the buttons. And that relieves the pressure. Now they'll be very easy to disconnect. Okay, I got the uh, skid pan mounted. I'll show you what that looks like, if you can see it in the dark. There you go. That's all mounted. But I did notice one thing that I thought wasn't right with the instructions. This bracket here, this was normally up here, and what I did is I took it and I turned it over and changed things around. It gave me more slack on these lower hoses. And, uh, but according to the instructions, it was, it came assembled. As you can see in figure one. And the tube, you can see this orientation of the tube. Well, I got it opposite of that now. So that's the way it's going to stay. It works much better. And I put a little bit of protective casing around the hoses so uh, it don't uh, chafe up against the uh, quick hitch for the FEL. So, uh, next up.
install is done, I think what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to take the pins out and I'm going to machine them and I'm going to put uh, some grease nipples in them and uh, make the grapple greasable. Uh, there will be an updated video on that. Hope you enjoyed the, the video. If you got any comments, make them. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. It keeps us encouraged in uh, making more uh, videos. And uh, I hope uh, you learned something from it all. I know I have never followed the instructions because sometimes they're wrong. But it's a great grapple and it's uh, very powerful. It's fast and it's exceeded my expectations. Thanks for watching. See you later.